Que tu se praga lezo, wale andralia, o jali kapa, paraneheza, chunele paraha, o ya gelegeaha, o galagizo gelaha, o ratezigaya, o ranamabahaga, dizo gelaha, o si glory, thank you for your glory. As glory in this place, as glory in this place. Where a world should be. Oh, you can, you can just, you can, you can perceive His presence all over this place. Shana kesto feke, tene mangeli zobra. Oh, forget about the pains. Shela baraha, egana maha, lagada da di do tede, shune kesta baha, ole mene brakabale, susefe, frafake. Shone gaste, rene kushi, prefikiza, parafonje, melastoli, tali gala, era tole, elaria dada, wakra de gede gede bo, shiria daba, evalida banana naha, elama mama mama, gora kira geda, kebera di shoke, ora na nengele wohosha, beviso laba. La bera heraka heratana herananga hakaja rane chigaba orane kezada. Forever you will be. Forever you. You're the lamb upon the throne, the lamb upon the throne. We gladly bow our knee. We gladly bow our knee to worship you, Lord, forever. Forever you will be. Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. You're the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee. I gladly bow. Everlasting Lord, thank you, Lord. 
He took me by hands. He led me through the wilderness. Picked me from the merry clay. And put my feet on the rock to stay. He has ordered my going out. We bless your name. Blessed tonight. Thank you. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, shine up. So, even if I teach for 30 minutes, we are not out of it. It's just to flow with the Spirit. You know, we didn't do praise, but we just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. All right. Can we settle down? All right. Let's start our teaching tonight from where we stop. 1 Corinthians and chapter 12, verse 1. So, Father, we thank you for understanding is granted your people. Insight into your word is available. And your people will bask in the light of your word tonight. And, Lord, every gray area today, the light of your word drives out those dark areas. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, concerning spiritual, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. I want you to understand that the believer is born first of the spirit. So, the things of the spirit are not strange to the believer. God is leading you not because you prayed. In fact, you are praying because God led you. That's a staggering statement and I want to take that again. God is leading you not because you prayed. In fact, you are praying because God led you. Because the born again experience is an experience of the spirit. Jesus, we put it this way, in John chapter 1. John chapter 3, I beg your pardon. John chapter 3 from verse 3. The born again experience is an experience of the spirit. He said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except they might be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, please follow me. He said, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that is the spirit, because the word of there is in italics, that tells you it was not in the original manuscript, so water is a description of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Now take note of verse 8. He said, don't, verse 8. He said, the wind blew it where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can't, can't not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So raise up on your right hand say I'm born of the spirit. Therefore I can enjoy the things of the spirit. The things of the spirit they are not strange to me. I only need to be taught them for me to flow in them. Help me look at your neighbor and say that is why we are teaching. Who is the first to say amen? amen. We're going to start today uh, from the book of Acts of the Apostles and chapter 2. And we'll read verse 4, and then we'll skip to verse 14. And quite a number of things we're going to be doing with this, because we're continuing from where we stop. It said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, Acts, the Spirit, gave them utterance. Question, do you have the Spirit? So we can speak in the Spirit, we can pray in tongues, because we have the Spirit in us. So the things of the spirit, they are not strange to us. That's why I said concerning spiritual, you should not be ignorant. But one thing you find there is that the spirit gave them utterance and they were filled. So to be filled is yielding to the gospel well explained. I repeat this again. To be filled is yielding to the gospel well explained. So how was the gospel explained to these people? If we read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Jesus will say this to his disciples before his ascension. 
from verse 2. Acts chapter 1 from verse 2. Acts chapter 1 from verse 2. We'll get to uh, verse 14 of chapter 2 later. But Acts chapter 1 from verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proof, being seen of them forty days, and speaking, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom. Let me say, Jesus took 40 days to explain the things of the Spirit. You know, that's exactly what happened. Jesus didn't, they didn't just automatically became filled with the Spirit. Jesus had done a teaching. And I saw they could wait for that experience. Okay, I'll put it this way. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, Luke's Gospel 24, let's see the whole process because Luke wrote the book of Acts of the Apostles. So let's see how Luke narrated it from verse 44. From verse 44, the same experience. He explained the same thing. For 40 days, Jesus was teaching. And he said unto them, this upon this resurrection, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was here with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. So up until this moment, they were, their eyes were closed to the scripture. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and doth it behove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. What will happen? And that repentance, that is the remission of sin, should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning where? That's the experience we have in chapter 1 of Acts of the Apostles. And ye are witnesses of these things. Look at the next verse. And behold, I send you. So it took 40 days for them to en encounter or to enjoy the things of the spirit. So Jesus taught them. They were not automatically filled with the spirit, but it was a result of teaching. Unfortunately, in our time, people want to flow in the things of the spirit, but they are not willing to learn. So the things of the kingdom will be things that you and I have access to. The things of the kingdom are the things of the spirit of Christ. Write that down to help you. The things of the kingdom are the things of the spirit of Christ. Because the kingdom is Christ. He said, thine is the kingdom. So the kingdom is Christ. So after teaching, he would say to them, you go with. So he, they had been taught. It is based on the teaching that they could flow in the things of the spirit. So teaching is paramount. And one of the things told a bishop. He said he must have the ability to teach. In Titus, he said, upholding sound doctrine. So teaching is crucial. The things of the spirit are things we continue to learn. If I were you, write that down. The things of the spirit are things we continue to learn. There is no break in walking in the spirit. You didn't hear what I just said. There is no break in walking in the spirit. You know, some people say, I walked in the spirit yesterday. No, you are of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Sorry, don't mind me. I will still come back to this. I'm just trying to explain things. Watch how he put it. I love this. Galatians 5 verse 25. Join me to read. Want to go? If we live in the spirit... Let us also walk in the spirit. Now, but when you look at this, you would think it's a conditional word. No, but the real translation says, since we live in the spirit. So the NLT or NIV want to ask that they put the NIV or NLT and we will read it together. Want to go? Since we live in the... Do we live by the spirit? So the things of the spirit, do we go on break, on recess on them? We live there. So the things of the spirit are not strange to us. The things of the spirit just need to be taught and continuously we learn them. And in learning them, we grow in them. No man has arrived in the things of the spirit. So write that down to help your understanding. No man has arrived in the things of the spirit. So it's a progression. The things of the spirit is a progression. Where you were yesterday shouldn't be where you should be today. It's a progression. 
and a progression for good. Not a progression from good to bad, but from, the, from where you are, from good to better. Hallelujah. So it was based on the scripture being explained. That was why they were filled and they spoke in other tongues. And so we'll now read Acts 2, verse 14 and 15. Let's see the response of Peter to the people who were saying, Ah, these men, we could hear them speak. What, what is all this? Peter could explain. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is by, but the third hour of the day. Join me read verse 20, uh, the next verse. Say, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet. It was a teaching. They might have prophesied it. That teaching is a fulfillment now. So the things of the spirit are taught. Otherwise, you get yourself into spiritism. The things of the spirit are taught. And you know, in Africa, we see a lot of people using telepathy. And a lot of people using, you know, all kinds of spirits. They get into spiritism. But the annoying aspect of it is that what they flow in, the people who are under them can flow in the same thing. The things of God are transferable. They are transferred through teaching. What I have learned is what I'm teaching you. What you learn is what you will teach others also. However, the Bible is the borderline. It's the baseline of our teaching. We don't get into some extra curricular activities to do the things of the spirit. We don't carry out sacrifices. I was told of someone who carried clay pot, eggs, and all of that as a pastor. I don't know the kind of pastor he is with a white garment. Not because he's a white garment person. No, he's not. And then went straight to the river. He said everything, we use everything to serve God. That would be a product of wrong teaching. Because that we didn't see with the apostles. So the apostles, they, become, they model Christ and the things of the spirit to us. And that is why you see we draw our example from them. And this is that which was spoken by the prophet who? Jewel. What did Jewel say? Let's read. So he began to teach them that what you saw now is the result of the prophecy of prophet Joel that these people have been taught because Jesus told them about the things of the kingdom and he said you will go to the upper room. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. So it was the 40 days teaching we saw the manifestation. Unfortunately, a lot of people want to see the manifestation of the things of the spirit without submitting themselves to be taught. And now that's a challenge we have had. People want to flow in the things of the spirit, but yet they don't want to be taught. One minute. One minute. I will read this. Should I read this or go back? I should read it. He said, and it shall come to pass. This is the fulfillment. That's what Peter was saying. It shall come to pass in the last days. The last day is not when this year is coming to an end. The last day was the culmination, the zenith, the fulfillment of all the prophets spoke about Jesus. It's the last day. It's been fulfilled. His death, burial, and resurrection ended it. That's why you hear the Bible say, this is a day. That day is a day of resurrection. So in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So what will be the result? Everybody read. So by virtue of your salvation, you can prophesy. Raise your right hand up. Say, I can prophesy because I am saved. That's a fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. You are a fulfillment of that prophecy. Being saved means you prophesy. So Peter began to explain to them. Now, question. The crowd, did they prophesy? Did the crowd prophesy? Did they speak in new tongues? No. But if they were taught, they would, they would, they would prophesy, they would speak in new tongues. So Paul began to teach, sorry, Peter began to teach what they had been taught. Excuse me, church. Are you still in the house? Peter began to teach what they had been taught. He said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Raise up your right. I prophesy in the name of the Lord. I am born again. I am born of the spirit. I have the spirit of prophecy. You see, we have taken out that mystery of her. No, you prophesy because you are born again. Because this was the prophecy of Joel. Now look at the next one. He said, no, listen, I'm not done with that place. Verse, yes. He said, and your young men, don't forget, your sons and your daughters, they progress, and your young men shall see vision. Say, I can see vision. Is the result of the spirit. Come on, say, is the result of the spirit that I got at salvation. So at salvation, you prophesy and you can see vision. So there are no steps to seeing vision. The only step is be born again. Now, a co because a lot of believers don't know this, they look at the things of the spirit to be for an exclusive reserve. They feel there are people, oh, some people say there are realms you get to. There are no realms. The only realm you get to is the realm of being born again. Tap your neighbor say the only realm you get to is the realm of being born again. Pastor Barry, you are not stopping me. It's like I'm too fast. Let me calm down. Extremely fast. I'm seeing, I'm feeling it. I think I bind myself. That's the spirit. She remind me I'm too fast. Hallelujah. So look at what Joy, uh, Peter will say. Peter say, what you a prophesy is that prophecy belongs to the child of God. Right where you are, prophecy belongs to you. He said, your sons and your daughters. Then he now went further by saying, your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Now, it may not be a biological age, but those who are also advanced in the things of the spirit. Now look at the next thing. And on my servant, what a God. God deals with everyone. He does not pour it on sons and daughters, young men and old men, but even servants, they receive this thing. He said, and on my servants. Now, you didn't hear what he said. So you take it back to verse 17. Everybody look at verse 17 and spot the difference. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Watch. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. Watch. He said, yo. He said, yo. Now, the next verse, take note. Take note. And my servant. So, they were your sons. They were your daughters. They were your young men. They are not my servant. So, the spirit of God comes upon you for service. They were your young men, they were your servants, they were your children or your young men, your sons and your daughters better put, and your young men and your old men. Peter said, and on my servant. So the outpouring of the spirit is for service. He said, and on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So, we remember the kumbes. But all of a sudden, all of them have become servants of God. But we can trace them, the kumbes. But all of a sudden, they are all now servants of God. We remember uh, the emains. All of them automatically, they are now servants. But we can trace them. But the difference is that as I pour out my spirit, they become my servants. Hello, church. He said, and I will show wonders in heaven and earth, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapors of smoke. But this is the point that Peter needed to bring out. I am teaching this because we have been taught this. What you are seeing now is a result of teaching. Everybody say amen to that. Now, I, I like to move forward. Uh, uh, so, what, what we find written in scripture should stir us up into this. So tap your neighbor. Say what we have read tonight should stir you up. I didn't hear. I said should stir you up into flowing in the supernatural. So I'll give you more examples here and you will like this. So the spirit was born in Acts 10, 42 and 43. Acts 10, 42 and 43. Acts 
Acts 10, 42 and 43. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Now, watch. He now said, this Jesus, Paul was recounting, sorry, Peter was recounting, said to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him, what should happen? I didn't hear you shall what? So, the next verse, the next verse, as soon as the word was taught, the next verse, please. As soon as the word was taught, watch. Why? Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost. When the word is taught, people can flow in the things of the spirit. This was the experience of Colinus, who was, a, was practicing Judaism. A Gentile, if you please. But uh, angels would not preach but he needed the ministry of Peter to preach. And Peter told him what will happen. And all of a sudden, why he yet taught the Holy Ghost came. And filled that place. And they began to speak. Let's see how Peter reported this when they were at the Jerusalem council. Permit me to read from verse 1. Please, from verse 1 of Acts of the Apostles 15. My emphasis is going to be verse Seven, but permit me. I want you to follow the line of thought. It says, and certain men, which, oh, come on. I haven't finished verse one. Certain men, which came down from Judea, Judah, taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised, after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. See, they have brought works to it. When therefore Paul, and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. That hot argument. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and the elders about the question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conviction of the Gentile, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. James. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Follow me. And they rose up certain what happened? Verse 1 said, some people taught circumcision. They are des describing the same people now. But certain rose, sorry, but there rose of certain of the sect of who? Which believed, saying, they were saved, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. We have reached the verse I was looking for. Can we read that verse now? And when there had been no much, much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles, how did God make choice? By his teaching. This is how we help people, by teaching. How did God make a choice? By the teaching from the mouth of Peter. Choice that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Where do we find that account? The account we read just now of Colinus, that the Gentiles are part of what Christ did. Therefore, such a thing can only be brought through teaching. Like you see, on Sunday we, we were able to explain the difference between the word of God and idol. And now we are trying to let you know that the word of God properly touched is how people, the flow 
or they understand the interpretation or they understand the leading of the spirit. It's because God will not speak beyond his word. That should help you. Write that down, it will help you. God will not speak beyond his word and God will not speak contrary to his word. Two things. God will not speak beyond his word. God will not speak contrary to his word. If you are in church, let me hear you say amen. amen. So the leading of God is the reward of the believer. That's where I'm taking you to. The leading of the spirit or the leading of God is the reward of a believer. So your reward for being saved is that you are led. And you can understand the things of the spirit. It's your reward. It's an inheritance. An inheritance is not what you work for. An inheritance is what you have by virtue of you being born into a teen. So, what we are trying to say tonight is the fact that the things of the spirit is a reward to you. And there are things we could put in place to enjoy the things of the spirit. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22. From verse 16. Everybody say with me, I can pray. You know, I can pray is different from I will pray, I will pray. You can sing that song without praying. Can I say that again? You can sing that song and yet you have not prayed. I hope you know. People like deceiving themselves. There are no formulas to praying. And there are no steps to praying. You just pray. Where did I quote? Now and now. Why tarriest thou arise? And be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. 17 is my emphasis. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even why, where did he pray? I was in a trance. Prayer is the number one door to interpreting the leading of the Spirit. Prayer. Most people say, when I was praying, the Lord gave me a word. You see, prayer brings your focus and attention to God. That he's everything you will ever need. That he's the answer to the questions in your heart. You know, there's something I wrote down about prayer. And let me quickly see if I can get that. I pray because I have the answers. Or I, have, I have the answers in his word. You didn't hear what I said. I pray because I have the answers in his word. So the word is the reason I pray. And that is why we'll be teaching you the word. I don't pray because I have a problem. I pray and receive answers to my prayer because I saw it in the Bible. And that's why even here we pray with the word. The word is the answer in prayer. Did you get what we just said? The word is my assurance that my prayers are answered. So, I pray because I have the answers. And where do I find the answers? In the word. And so that's why when we use the word of God, we say, Lord, this is what your word says. And we pray. In the light of Christ, we have answers. So we are not praying to receive answers. We pray because we have answer. Where is our answer? Thank you. Why do we pray? Because we have answers. If you didn't have answer, you won't pray. You didn't hear me. That should, we should change the narrative the way people think. People think I'm going to pray so that I have answer. No, I am praying because I have answers. Where do I have the answer? The word. That is why we pray. Father, it is written. That is the answer that is making you to pray. And that is why you say, I hold on to this word. Because the word is the answer to your prayer. So I got hold of that and I wrote it down quickly because to me it made a whole world of difference that I pray because I have the answers in his word. So I don't speak to situations but I speak the answers. So I'm not praying because of situation. I speak the answer in the midst of that situation. Now where do I have the answer? The word of God. I'm not talking about people who say I'm going for interview. Give me three scriptures for favor interview. That is that is a herbalist trying to do incantation. I am going, I'm going for the interview. I thank God because the Bible says he gives me a mouth and a wisdom that no man can resist or gainsay. 
So I pray, I go for that interview. Based on this, I have answers. Am I communicating? Please, I want you to write it. I must say it again. I pray because I have the answers in his word. Don't speak to situation, but speak the answer. Stop speaking to situation, speak the answer that you want. Can I give you a typical example of that? You remember a woman said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, what will happen? So what did the woman do? She spoke her answer before she went. You know, we sing it. It is Jesus. I think it's Andrew Crush that sang it. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched just the hem of his garment. And his borders made me whole. But the woman did not get whole because she touched the border. She got her answer before she touched the border. So the touching was the, the answer that she already prophesied. So we pray the word because the word is our answer. Did I clear your doubt? I had to give you that as an example. Otherwise, we would just be praying like that and then not have answer. Jesus will always speak the answer. You remember when he said, let's go to uh, Lazarus' house to wake him? Was Lazarus asleep, asleep, asleep or he was dead? What did Jesus speak? The answer. Let's go and wake him up. Is it not what he said? He said, yeah, the disciples, they don't understand. Then he now said, Lazarus, our friend, is dead. But let's go and wake him up. We are not going there to look at the situation. So this changes the narrative. Hmm, Father, look at the problem. You cannot flow or interpret the things of the spirit when you keep seeing situation. The word of God is the answer to our prayer. That is why we pray. So I pray because I have the answers in this world. Can I ask you a question? Why do you pray? You know, Jesus will meet some people and say, will that be made whole? He said, because the answer is being whole. So I'm asking, would that be made whole? He said, yes, help my own belief. Jesus does not speak. This is your condition. When, when, will that be made whole? You remember the man who had been there for 38 years? The man said, I have no man. That is not the question I ask. I'm speaking solution. Not how long you have been here and your challenges. Let me tap your neighbor and say, enough of talking about your challenges. Then look at your neighbor in the eyes and say, stop this pity party. At best, people will empathize with you. Their condition has not changed. But we have answers in the word of God. Come on, talk to me. Well, we have answers. Where do we have the answer? So each time we have the word, we have the answer. So, one primary way we enjoy the things of the spirit will be in the place of prayer. So, prayer was a means of access into trance in the case of this man we saw. He said, and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, what happened? It was catapulted. And I look at the next verse, and I saw him saying unto me, we will find out who is the him Paul was talking about, make haste, get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. He was coming to preach Christ. Christ, while he was praying, told him, in a trance, quickly take off, also one Nigeria Limited. He didn't say, my God is I am that I am. He didn't hear me. The God that he would have referred to, I am that I am, say, run. Now, look at he, I ever tried doing something. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue. Them that believed on thee. He was trying to talk about the past. And when the blood of thy martyr, Stephen, was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, come on, read. He said unto me, also, 
He said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far, hence unto the Gentile. And they gave him audience unto his word, and then lifted up their voice and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. But you see, before that, in the place of prayer, he fell into a trance. There are things that maybe by the weakness of the spirit you cannot pick. In the place of prayer, you pick them. Because prayer is at a time of focus and attentiveness. True of us. It's a time of what? Focus and attentiveness. There are people who have not been able to build themselves up in the things of the spirit. And I, I'm surprised when I see them praying. This is how they pray. Any little distraction that distracted. And in such condition, even if there are things to be witness to you in your spirit, what your eye sees will get the better part of you than what God is giving to you. So, it is not a must you close your eyes. But we close our eyes as a training to be focused. Can I say that again? It's not a must that we close our eyes. But we close our eyes as a training to be focused. Because we are not just doing, you know, an exercise in futility. And let's just pray. So the pastor will know I'm praying. He's looking at, maybe a kid is playing somehow. Someone is praying. And there is a message to be passed to you. He's going like this. You see. <laughs> but I've seen people. Who have trained themselves, they could open their eyes. Even if a person passes, they are not distracted. But you have not reached that level. Brother, close your eyes. When you open your eyes, you see, see the same people. Because the place of prayer is a place of focus and attentiveness. I'm praying because I have answers. And if I have answers, I must look inward to know what the Lord is saying and enjoy the things of the Spirit. Let me say, I enjoy the things of the Spirit. They are my bet right. So in the place of prayer, God can say, get out quickly. Can say, get out, out of this place quickly. Because the things of the spirit, they are our inheritance. Like we said earlier on, they are the reward we have for being saved. We walk in the spirit. For being saved, we understand and interpret the things of the spirit. Because we are born of the spirit. Oh, come on, talk to me. Romans 8 and verse 9, two scriptures, and we'll close for tonight. And on Sunday, we'll take it up from there. Romans 8, verse 9. Read with me if you are there. But you are not in the flesh. Hey, say, say, to my, say to yourself, I am not in the flesh. So what are you? He said, but in the spirit. So I'm in the spirit. I can know the things of the spirit. I can interpret the things of the spirit. I understand the things of the spirit. Because I'm not in the flesh. To be in the flesh, I will not know the things of the spirit. I will not interpret the things of the spirit. I will not uh, uh, understand the things of the spirit. The Bible says the carnal man does not understand the things of the spirit. But you are not carnal. You are already saved. You are led of the spirit already. Maybe we'll read from verse 7. Let me read from verse 7. You will enjoy it from verse 7. Glory be to God forever. I said glory be to God forever. Amen. Let's do this. He said because. Because. The kind of man. Is enmity against God. For it is not subject. To the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then. They that are in the flesh, I didn't hear you, cannot. To be in the flesh is to be outside of the faith. Because without faith, the Old Testament people be depending on that, it is impossible to please God. But we are in the faith, and that is why we can please God. Then in us, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It shall be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Question. How many of you have the Spirit of Christ? Say with me, I have utterance. I can prophesy. Say with me, I have utterance. I can prophesy. 
I speak in tongues. I interpret. That is prophecy. Say with me, say, the number one sign of a believer. In my name, they shall cast out devils and speak with other tongues. So when I speak in other tongues, I interpret his prophecy. Where I just quoted now is Mark 16, 17. That's the place I just quoted. I am in the spirit. So my time is up for tonight. We're going to take questions. But before we take questions, he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. What will they do again? They will speak. So what did they do in Acts 2, 4? They spoke in tongues as the spirit of God gave them. But that was as a result of teaching. True? So can you speak in tongues? You can. Do you have utterance? Yes. But who does the speaking in you? Who will give the utterance? God. Who will prophesy in you? Who will give you utterance? God. Am I communicating? And the spirit of God in you cannot be two. There is this teaching people say, uh, we have uh, my, my, my spirit and that of God. No. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, 18, 19. I close there. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, 18, 19. You know, because of our worship tonight, we took time into our teaching time, but it was a what, it was what, what the why. Watch, read with me. One to go. But he that is joined unto the Lord is how many spirit? Lord. Say, I don't have two spirit. I, I have the spirit of Christ. Now, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But the, the, he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Everybody read this last verse. One, two, go. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. This one. Uh -huh. Which you have of God and you are not alone. In a temple, you find a spirit. In a temple. You are the shrine of God. The potency of every shrine is the presence of the spirit. Now friends, you are powerful because the spirit of God is in you. You don't have two spirits. You don't have a good spirit. You don't have a do spirit. You don't have a quiet bone spirit. You have the spirit of Christ because you are one with the spirit. How many of you have been blessed? Let's do what those who are in the spirit do. Plakaso, frakali, delebuza, figara hasto. Barahadasta, free gatene baraha, jura kade, bregadus evranaha, alange kis da beke, free katama jigade, feligadush e kanama, barade kine man, tolas diza, fragatizi, prigavana non deche, fragane, 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 fragana, ezika, sikana, epefi, sike, koshe. Now, but here what the Lord will have me say to you. He said, the light will get brighter and brighter and brighter. Though it was a little light, but it grows, says the Spirit of God. And this light is my knowledge in your heart. It grows beyond what you used to be. And then it takes you higher than where you used to be. For my light spreads in your heart. And this knowledge you pass to others, says the Spirit of the Lord. Bless you tonight. Make some noise in the house. Do you know what I've just done today? I've taught you the things of the spirit that you can control yourself. You see, you have dominion over your body. Say with me, I have dominion over my Sickness does not have dominion over me. So I've taught you what you can do to have dominion over yourself. Questions? And we'll close. Pastor Moses Akbar, good to see you. Questions? So the, the message is well understood today. All right, take the microphone to my friend and tell us two things you, you gained today. That's what we did yesterday. The guy behind Jackson. Quickly, we want to know what you wrote. After that, I moved to Odera. When I moved from a boy, I moved to a girl. From a girl to a boy. What did you learn? Okay, I, I learned that God made choice by his ways. Yes, by the words of Peter. Yes, yes. God, God will not speak beyond and contrary to his ways. That's correct. Let's clap for him. God will not speak beyond and contrary to his word. So move to other. We want to know because you can't come to this church and just relax like this. I will catch you. I know those who were not writing. You were laid back. I was watching you. 
So the microphone will get to your hand now. If I were you, start doing expo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I learned that God will not speak beyond his word. No, someone has said that one. Go on that one. There are so many things we learned okay. today. That the things of the kingdom are also the things of Christ. That's correct. The things of the kingdom are the things of Christ. Because Christ is the kingdom. Another, no, only one she said. Only one you said. Look at your note. Yes, only one thing you said. Ah, 